Okay, we have here today a crazy looking integral from the University of Florida Integration B 2016, problem 25. We have the limit as n goes to infinity of this whole big mess dx. Okay, now at first this seems pretty impossible, but then I was looking at it a little bit closer, and maybe this is just like four easy integrals or four moderate integrals that we can do. Like this integral right here is very simple. That's just going to be power rule, and of course, integrating e to the x is going to be easy. So I think what I want to do is start with the innermost integral because like to do this one right here, it's going to be dependent on this in order to get the bounds. And then we're going to need to get the bounds here in order to integrate e to the x. So first what I'll do is we'll just start with this integral from 0 to n. We'll bring the limit inside on this and write it like this. So we have the limit as n's going to infinity of this and we're just integrating theta cubed d theta. And so on this one, we're just going to integrate with power rule. We're going to get theta to the fourth over four evaluated from zero to n. The second part's going to be zero. We plug that in. That's just going to be a zero. So what we're really looking at here is the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the fourth over four. And normally we would just say that this integral doesn't converge. But in this case, we're going to want to use this for the upper bound. So we can say that this thing as a limit, it's going to be going to infinity. And so what I can do is just kind of get rid of this and change this upper bound to infinity. And then next, now that we've got our bound set on this one, let's move on and do this integral right here. And first, let me just kind of write it down here. And now for this integral here, kind of noticing that like, this is the reciprocal of E, we've got a reciprocal right here. Also the fact that we've got a U squared, it's making me think this is a good case for a substitution where I can do now we already used like, we have used like all of our variables up here. So let's use y right now. So I'll say for this, actually, let me substitute for one over u. So I'll say one over u is y, and then y is gonna be one over u. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and then so rearranging this, we can say u equals one over y, take a derivative. So our du value is gonna be minus y, sorry, minus one over y squared dy. So we'll go ahead and substitute first, taking infinity, plugging it in somewhere. What's going to happen is plugging it in here, our y value is going to be going to zero. And then plugging in one over e right here, you just flip it, our y value is going to be e for the lower bound. Then coming over here, this is going to become natural log of y, one over y squared here. Our du value is going to be this minus one over y squared dy but then I can just cancel y squareds out right here. So we just have one left in the denominator. I'll take this minus sign here and let's just use that to flip our bounds. So now we have our bounds as zero to e. And now we'll just go ahead and integrate this. I'm just gonna use the formula on this. Normally you could do it up by integration by parts, but the formula for the integral of natural log y is gonna be y ln y minus y. We just need to evaluate from zero to e. Plugging everything in first, plugging in e, we're gonna have e ln e is going to be just 1, and then we plug in e here, we're going to have minus e. And then for the second part, you plug in here, you're going to have a 0. Even though natural log is going to minus infinity, when you do the limit out, this is still going to be a 0 here. And then plugging in 0 here, we get another 0. But e minus e is just 0, 0 is just 0, the whole thing is just 0. And so what we can do is take it, update this whole upper bound here, and update this to 0. Okay, next, the integral is starting to look pretty lopsided with the whole upper bound cleared up, but now we just need to focus on this one right here in order to get our lower bound. And I think this is actually kind of the hardest part or the weirdest part anyway. So for this one, so first, let's just kind of go inside of our floor function and try to simplify this. Like first, looking at the numerator, actually the first thing I noticed is a really bad mistake. This was one of my biggest fears was I wouldn't copy the problem down right because there's so much going on. But this is not an arctan here. This is a tan squared. Hopefully I get it right in the thumbnail. So sorry about that. We'll go ahead and we'll try to simplify this. So first, here we have t in common. So let's factor out a t. And then this becomes 1 plus tan squared of this stuff. But now for 1 plus tan squared, we can just use the identity on that and write that as secant squared of pi over 2 minus t. And then let's bring our cosecant squared back into this. So I'm not saying these are equal, I'm just trying to simplify everything. So for the whole expression, so for the whole thing, we have cosecant squared t in the denominator. 
But then for this right here, we want some, we don't really like having this input here, pi over two minus t, and you may notice this is just like the complementary angle formula. And you're probably, I mean, I think we're more familiar with it in the terms of cosine. So we, if you write it like this, one over cosine squared pi over two, complementary angle formula for cosine is just sine. So this becomes one over sine squared of t. But one over sine squared of t is just the same thing as cosecant squared of t. So updating this, what do we have? We have t times cosecant squared t over cosecant squared t. This just cancels. And then everything inside the floor function, all we're left with is just a t. But now for this right here, this kind of gave me some trouble because, because when you think about this as when n's going to infinity, this is clearly not going to converge. So it's going to be a real problem. But what I want to do is actually forget about the limit for a second and just let's just deal with the integral. And with the floor function, what we usually do is we like to break this up so that the bounds are separated by integer values. So for a second, I'm going to kind of consider that n is an integer. So then when you do that, starting at minus n for the lower bound, the floor is going to round us down to the lower value. What's going to happen here is this is going to become minus n. And then for the next one, it's going to be the same kind of thing, minus n plus 1 to minus n plus 2. The floor, is gonna, the floor here is going to round us down to the lower bound again, minus n plus 1. And of course, we're going to just go on and on forever like this all the way till the upper bound of n. But now setting it up where our bounds are separated by just one, what happens when you integrate that, and with this being a constant here, is this becomes a constant that come out of the integral. When the bounds are separated by one, the integral value is just going to be one. So what we end up with here is just minus n plus minus n plus one plus minus n plus two. Eventually this thing is going to get to zero, and then eventually we're going to get back to something like this. We're going to have n minus two, and then the last one's going to be n minus 1. But what we could do is, let's just look at this last integral here. When the upper bound's n, this last one, the lower bound's going to need to be n minus 1. Well, the floor is going to round us down to n minus 1. And so this last integral is just going to be this n minus 1 value. But then now that we have all of our terms listed out, n minus 1 is going to cancel with 1 minus n. n minus 2 is going to cancel with 2 minus n. There'll be an n minus 3. Everything's going to cancel. 0 is just 0 and then all we're left with is minus n. And so the interesting thing is when you just do this integral when n some finite value, it always works the same way where like, if you, so like if n is five, you're gonna get minus five. If n is 10, you're gonna get minus 10. So it does make sense if n's going all the way to infinity, you're gonna get just this minus n here. And so now all we need to do is evaluate this when n is approaching infinity. Of course, the integral is not gonna converge, but what's gonna happen is this, gonna, this thing's gonna be going to minus infinity. So what I can do is update this lower bound to minus infinity, and then we can finish it off. Okay, so now after everything, we just have ourselves a really easy integral to do. So integrating e to the x, we get just e to the x. And we just need to evaluate from minus infinity to zero. Plugging in zero here, e to the zero is just one. e to the x at minus infinity, this is going to be going to zero. So putting it together for my final solution is we just get a one. Okay, so there it is. Pretty insane problem from Florida 2016. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.